Hey guys, little boy here. Before I start this video, I want to wish everyone Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I am on vacation in my parents' house right now, but I got bored and decided to make a video. A lot of people have been complaining about my pronunciation for a long time, and I can only thank them. My pronunciation is bad, and I really understand everyone coming to defend me. As we get involved in a YouTube channel or with any personality we enjoy, we tend to get defensive about them. I know that most people can understand me, but I strive for perfect English. It might not look like it, but I have tried my best to slowly improve. I mean, there are tons of things I have to improve at the same time, so you might not notice it instantly. But I definitely read the comments and try my best to remember them and work on the issues. I really want a spot on a studio or a tournament, and I don't want my accent to be on the way. Anyways, sorry for the rant, let's get started with the video. Hey guys, little boy here, and this is how to play Sven in 700, featuring Fear. As soon as the game starts, we already see Fear's team being smart. Everyone knows how annoying and strong a level 5 timber saw in 5 minutes seems to be, and to deal with that, you usually want to contest his farm at level 1, especially if you have a tri lane. Maintaining 3 heroes in a lane against Timber or even Bristolback without being aggressive against him or zoning him early is asking to give him an early triple kill and then a bloodstone. The kill is possible because they harass him a little bit earlier before and they simply go as soon as the creep wave meets. Yeah, he lost CS but the first blood gold and the fact Timber so is not going to have the easiest game of his life is definitely worth it. One interesting aspect we can note here is that after getting the first blood kill, Fear does not go for Quelling Blade, even though he has the money for it. As I talked about in the PL video, it seems like safe lane carriers are less and less likely to get the item unless they go for Battle Fury. And just a few moments later, they get another kill on Timber Soul with Fear's Mango, pretty much a core item on the hero early on, at least in my opinion. There are a bunch of cool things to pick up from this fight. The first one is they going on Timber only after Arc Ward commits, which makes sense since Warlock early on doesn't offer that much DPS, especially after using Shadow Ward on Fear. Also, check how they poke Timber before committing Starbolt. It would be very easy for Timber to back off if he initiated with it. By not committing the stun early, they give the false impression on Timber that he can get a kill. Before this patch, Fear would always go Treads before going Helm of the Dominator, to be able to Thread switch and have that extra bit of stats in early fights. This doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Helm of the Dominator now offers similar attack speed to Treads, gives stats, and the only thing you really are losing is the ability to Thread switch between stats, since the movement speed from Brown Boots and Treads are the same. It feels to me that the only reason Fear went Quelling Blade this game is because of how annoying it is to last hit as a melee hero against Timbersaw. Sven doesn't have bad right click damage, but when you keep missing CS against it, it's just better to spend the gold on the item since 4 creeps equals Quelling Blade pretty much. In this footage, they dive Warlock and I really like Fear's decision making. There's no way he can stop Timbersaw from diving and killing Warlock, so instead he tries his luck on Skyref. He does not have the mana, so Sky runs away, but it's cool to see that even though both kills are hard, he goes for the more likely to happen anyways. He ends up dying, and when he goes back, he stops contesting Timbersaw's farm because he is already level 6. And you can see him doing something, a lot of players are afraid to do so for some reason, but it's probably going to be more common now that you don't get lifesteal from Dominator anymore. So you're kind of forced to ult if you want to get stacks, especially if you still don't have your Dominator. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Warlock ends up fighting Skyrath, but again we see Timber owning them, and that's a Timber saw that got killed twice in the lane and almost died a third time. Fear does a pretty cool trick here. With the extra move speed buff on Dominated Crips, he blocks Timber so pretty nicely. Let's talk a little bit about Dominated Crips now. As this game develops, you will see him stacking eventually, but way way less frequent than before. Like in the PL video, Fear uses Crips to either tank some of the damage, 
increase his DPS in the jungle or to be aggressive in other parts of the map. Another point to be made is his skill build. I am not sure if he maxed stun in this game because they lack a damage to kill Timbersaw, but if you watch this game, the first ancient stack he goes for is around the 15 minute mark, when he pretty much had cleave maxed. It feels like with no lifesteal and with stronger ancient creeps, maxing cleave early doesn't pay off that much as before. If you're taking normal jungle camps, cleave doesn't make you farm them so much faster. And if you have a dominated creepy fuel like wolf or tomato, you can make up for it with some of the aura damage. But it could be only because of Timbersaw. Let's see how he keeps playing his next Sven games. This is one of the latest videos from Fear and in the ones before this one he was maxing cleave, so well, I, I don't know. His build is pretty much based on the old one with the added benefit of getting into old Blink, Echo Saber and Helm of the Dominator faster. At the same time though, it feels like your farm is lower than before because of the ancient changes. Since Fear already died two times in this game, I really like his decision of going for a trade in the bottom lane instead of fighting again. There are a lot of reasons for it. The first one is that even though in theory you get level 2 ult at the same rate than you would get in the old patch, in the old patch Sven would farm way more experience than now because of Ancients, they give a lot of experience. He still doesn't have level 2 ult or Echo Saber, so fighting again could put him in a terrible spot. He forces Timber to TP back, and we see the same pattern of farming in the jungle, just using his dominated crypto farm. At around 14 minutes he sends his creep to stack Ancients, and he does it on the Shrine Camp because not only his team can react to the enemies contesting the stack, it also has the trine with regen, so I guess this is just safer and better. I'm pretty sure that camp will be prioritized more in stacking ancients than the other one. I'm not really sure about how much you can stack on them though. I really like him smoking with his team instead of farming that stack. I mean, the important part is not smoking with your ult on cooldown. With 5 it might not make a difference if he has ult, but Dire was smoked behind them and the ult does make a difference in 5 versus fights, but Dire ends up disengaging. After that fight, Fear decided to go for a very different build, at least in the last patch, no one would even dare to touch Shadowblade on Sven, at least it was very very rare. But when you think about it, Dire has two very strong armor based passives to take off, and if you don't know, you don't get the negative buff from Venge if you kill her during Silver Edge, which is actually pretty huge on Sven. Also, they already have Center Ult working as a gap closer. Yes, he kills BKB as his next item, but he does Silver Edge straight after that, and this game lasts for a long time, so we can see it being relevant countless times. And we see Shadowblade working here, just seconds after he gets the item. Of course, this would be pretty much the same with Blink Dagger, but Silver Edge does give extra benefits than Dagger, while with Center Ult, he still gets the initiation aspect of the item, at least when they fight in their side of the map. Actually, another interesting point for Shadowblade slash Silver Edge, at least in this game, and that you will be able to see if you keep watching this on Pugna, is that with Blink Dagger, a well-positioned Venge will always be able to save a specific target. With Shadowblade, he can infiltrate the fight, maybe kill Venge first, or identify whether she is positioned in a way to save the target or not. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please guys, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the extended version of this video, please check the link in the description. And I can't overstate how this video wouldn't ever be possible without Pugna. Pugna is a platform where you can learn from people like Chessy, Fogged, Slasher, Monib and get better at the game. They have now great content on 700 and if you want to raise your MMR it's a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than others and get those easy wins. And of course, if you're new to my channel, subscribe to it if you enjoy this content. As soon as the laning phase starts, we can see a big difference. Artizzi don't go for Quelling Blade, in fact, he never buys it. And this was something pretty common for any PL since Quelling Blade worked on Illusions. The fact that it doesn't scale as you get more edgy seems to be enough to disregard the item completely. In this clip we can see how PL was a good pick this game, since Artizi was aware of his surroundings, he spots Tiny and Slarder setting up this gank, and check how not only he positions himself to use Dopewalk, but he is already facing where he wants to jump. 